someone was there with us and they shouldn't have been. So I've got a story time to tell you guys as I promised in the last video. Traveling so far has been really great and it's still great but I definitely had an experience that shook me a little bit. I like, don't even know how to start this story. Okay, well, I think the last we left off was Lake Talcon in Florida. And that was WMA land that we stayed on and it was down a sketchy road, but we got there, had the campsite, it was beautiful, and then we moved on. And the next day we headed to Panama City Beach, Florida, um, in order to meet up with my dad, who was on his way to Louisiana. I found this beautiful campsite that was free called Blue Springs. We found where we were supposed to be and we drove down this dirt road. I guess WMA or Bureau of Land Management areas, they just have dirt roads that you have to go down in order to find your campgrounds, just like the last one in Lake Talcon. We found our campground and it had like a gate, a small gate and a padlock on it. And they gave us the um, code. And even though the campsites are free, you still have to have a reservation so that the people know who's there. There was this natural um, spring out in the back of it and it was like crystal clear water and we were the only people at the campsite which was really cool we were like man we have this whole place alone that's gonna be awesome we unhitched we went and got dinner and we came back to the campsite and i had had a really bad headache that night so i went to bed kind of early fast forward at one in the morning my dog, Banks, started wolfing a little bit. Not like super loud, but like a little bit quiet. She just started doing these little barks. And I woke up and I was like, man, it's probably an animal or whatever. I was trying to go back to sleep. And then she got up and got off the bed and walked to the door and just faced the door and started growling. It was this really weird growl that I had like never heard before. And so I was like, okay. After she started doing this growl, I was like, no, like th this is ridiculous. So I got freaked out and I woke him up and I was like, hey, listen, like, I don't know what she's barking at or whatever. He was like, well, what do we, you know, what do we do or whatever? And I was like, well, just listen, just wait for her because if she goes and lays back down, then everything's fine. The animal probably passed or whatever it was. So that's what she does. She goes back onto the bed and she lays down. And I'm thinking, okay, fine. So I like breathe a sigh of relief. But then as soon as she lays down, like plops down, she stands right back up and she woofs again. Let me just explain really fast. This is the front of my camper. This is the side where it hitches up to the truck or to the car. This over here is the front door that that way that I'm facing is the back of the camper. As soon as she woofed again, when she stood up, I heard a truck start out the front side of this camper, right outside. And I was like, did you hear that? And someone was like, yeah, I heard that. Oh my God. And we listened and I immediately got up and grabbed my can of bear mace. Cause I had no, like, I didn't, there was a person outside that wasn't supposed to be there at one in the morning. And I'm going through these ideas in my head. I'm like, okay, could this be a guy that's clearing out the porta potties in this park, like down the way or whatever? No, why would anyone clear out porta potties at one in the morning? You're going to get disgusting. Like that's not gonna work out. I'm thinking like, who, who is this? And then every option that I went through, it just was like, no, that doesn't make sense. Someone is here because they have bad intent. And then we listened to the truck pull around from back here to the side, to the door, like right to the door and rev their engine. And I'm like, holy, I'm so scared. And my travel buddy is so scared and the adrenaline is just going and my dog is just standing there at the door, like ready. Like whoever comes in the door, first thing they're gonna see, Doberman Pinscher, like whatever, you know? But still, I'm horrified because what if they don't open the door? What, um, this is the things that are going through my head. What if they want, they, what if they don't even want to rob me? What if they just want, they're just someone like out of their mind and they just want to kill somebody? Like what if they could just shoot through the door? They could shoot through the side of the, 
the camper. Like, I have no idea what's about to go on, but I'm horrified. So I'm like holding the spare mace and trying to get the safety thing off of it or whatever. And I listen to the truck pull away really slowly. It pulls away. And I look at my travel buddy and I say, we're leaving. I don't know if they are going to go get their friends and say, yeah, there's a camper here. Like, let's rob, like, whatever. Let's rob them. I don't know. I don't know what they're thinking. I don't know what their intent was. It's not good because it's one in the morning at a place they don't have a reservation and they're inside the gate of this place. And I'm down a sketchy road in the middle of nowhere. So I'm, that's not good. I get things. I get Dylan and we get in the car and we just start going. And then <clears throat> We get to the gate and the gate is locked, which means that they took the time to relock the gate, which just is so strange to me. So we get out the gate. I'm shining the headlights on Dylan. I'm driving. He gets out of the car and we're in the woods and he gets out to unlock the gate. And I'm like, dude, I'll watch you in the headlights. I've got your back. Don't worry. Like you do this. So he unlocks the gate. I drive through. He locks it back and he runs in the car. And then we're hauling ass down this dirt road. Earlier that day when we were pulling in, we our car got chased by dogs down this dirt road, by the way. Like, this is where I'm at. It's just, it's not a good neighborhood. We finally get to the main road and we're about eight miles away from the nearest gas station. Eight miles away from the nearest anything. And I'm going. It's, you know, like now one 20 in the morning or something and I'm driving so fast I'm like I need to think I need to think we need to pull over I need to think and because our adrenaline is still like crazy so we left the camper we left everything because to me whatever's gonna happen if that guy comes back it's not worth my life to spend the next 20 minutes hitching up the camper just to you know I don't know just to take it with me it's not worth my life so we leave everything here and we just have the dog me villain in the car and that's it in this huge can of beer maze and so we get to a gas station and I'm like I'm thinking I'm like okay we're not going back tonight so I'm I'm gonna get a hotel like that's how that's gonna go I don't care it, it's gonna be the cheapest one in Panama City but we're getting a hotel I'm not going back to that campsite it's now two in the morning 2.30 in the morning by the time we get into the room, okay? I'm I'm still exhausted. I ha I went to bed with the gnarliest headache, like, and my adrenaline will not let me go back to sleep. So we end up falling asleep at like four in the morning. And the next day when I woke up, um, I called my dad who had made it to Panama City that, that night. And I was like, hey, this is what happened last night. Like, I'm not going back there by myself. Can you escort me back to the campsite? So he says, yeah. So I meet him at his hotel and then we drive the 45 minutes back to the campsite. Literally expecting my campsite to be trash. I'm expecting the camper to be like up in flames and the door to be busted open and all my stuff gone. Like I'm, I'm anticipating the worst, but we get there and everything is in its place. Like even our chairs like our little lawn chairs and stuff are still like outside everything is fine the campsite looks beautiful again it's daytime there's one difference that wasn't there well, the night before when we left there's a pair of dirty men's underwear on the ground and an empty pack of l m cigarettes just laying there so someone came someone was there and someone came and left that there for whatever reason. I get the camper, everything's fine. I take it to the hotel and I'm just like, We're, this is just how this is gonna be tonight. We're not saying it, you know, we didn't say it at the campground. I guess you're gonna have this from time to time. The next day, I called the people that I made a reservation with and I was like, hey, I just want you guys to be aware of an incident that happened. They transferred me to the guy that like owns all the land who's like the head honcho guy. So I explained it to him. And you know what he says to me? He says, yeah, this isn't the first time we've had complaints. Okay, and you couldn't put that on your website? You can't warn people that someone will show up to your campsite at one in the morning and rev their engine right outside your door? Are you kidding me? He's like, yeah, well, the people that live on that road, 
they they've been known to try to intimidate the campers um, so that they don't come back so here's what I'm thinking first and foremost I don't know that whoever's camping there doesn't know that they don't know this person's intent I don't know if this is some 17 year old kid that's just trying to go skinny skinny dipping in the in the spring I don't know if this is someone that lives on the road trying to intimidate the campers the, the guy said, yeah, they've had instances where they're like banging on the gates and rattling the chains and stuff. I don't know if this is some dude out of his mind that is out to kill me or rob me. I don't know who they are at all. But here's the other thing. They don't know who I am either. If that was a 17-year-old kid just trying to go skinny dipping and I'm some PTSD army vet like that's really trigger happy or whatever, I could have killed a 17 year old kid. If I had been a camper and I'm like, you know, this really old couple and I get scared, I could have a heart attack or a stroke or something. Like I could have died and they were just trying to intimidate me. No, all of this is unacceptable. And I told the guy, you need to put this on your website. You need to warn people that these things occur because you have no idea S someone could get killed like very easily like either the person that's outside or the person inside someone could die and since your campground is free you are not going to lose out on profits by putting a warning up there he's like yeah well we have a really hard time putting that kind of stuff on the internet i'm like yeah I'll, you know i'll bet you do it was by far one of the most horrifying moments of my life it's all fine and dandy now i can talk about it now i can even make jokes about it now but at that time i can't express the amount of fear that was going through me and my mind was racing of what am I going to do? Like, should I send Banks out? Am I going to have to bear mace this dude? What is my travel buddy going to do? And I'll tell you what I've learned. First of all, I'm never staying somewhere where I'm the only camper ever again. If I can help it. It might be bound to happen at some point. But let's talk more about that. If I'm the only camper there, I don't want to stay in places where there's not an actual gate that closes, okay? With a padlock that's been changed in the last 15 years, like please. Bureau of Land Management and Wildlife Management areas can be great, but seriously consider the cost. Yes, they might be free. What is that worth? Another thing, I won't go to sleep anymore without having everything ready to go. I'm not leaving my chairs out. I'm not, you know, I'm not having the car facing in. I'm having the car facing out so it's quick to go. I'm going to have my keys exactly where they need to be. Banks's leash exactly where they need to be. And I'm going to have my backpack packed with all of my valuable stuff like my camera and my computer and my phone chargers. I'm going to be ready because that taught me a lot. But if that happens again, I might not be as lucky. It might not just be some local trying to stay, scare off campers. That was my experience with Panama City Beach. That um, campground was called Blue Springs and it was in the Ecofina, I don't know how to pronounce it, it's spelled E-C-O-F-I-N-A, Ecofino um, Wildlife Management Area in Youngstown, Florida. Do not go there. I mean, it's just not worth it because if they're in a bad mood one day, you don't know. It's not worth it. Don't go there. After that, we left Florida altogether. And everything has been fine and dandy since then. So I will, you know, my next video, I'll show you guys. I'll get back to all the adventures. I'll get back to seeing all the cool stuff. Um, but I had to get that out there. I also wanted to show you guys what I learned from that. And hopefully this serves as a lesson that doesn't have to be learned through personal experience but can be learned through my experience for when you have instances like this think about your safety all the time know where everything is find your way around with your hands in the dark as practice because in those moments there's no time for questioning there's no time for stuttering and stammering around and trying to figure out where your keys are just be ready and Stay safe out there. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening to my story. We'll move on from there.